Oh, all right. What is up? Get everything locked in here real quick, and we will get underway. Give everybody a few minutes to show up. Different time than usual tonight, obviously. Usually we're rocking and rolling at 7 p.m., but, well, the Super Bowl was on. And, of course, I had bets all over the board. All kinds of fun prop bets and bet on the game. Had Tampa Bay money line. Fantastic wager, if I don't say so myself. Yo, Rob, what's up, bro? How you doing, buddy? How's everybody's weekend going so far? All right, starting to load them on in. So we've had a pretty crazy week this week, huh? All kinds of wild stuff going on. Hey, Kamantha, what's going on? So tonight, I plan on... We'll probably go for about an hour and... I don't know, hour, hour and 15 minutes tonight, considering we got a late start. I know on the East Coast, it's getting pretty late. Nice. Getting that week started off correctly on a Monday, huh, Kamantha? Way to go. Got about four hours until it's uh, Monday here, but be pumping away through all the way. I'll be up all night tonight. I just got done drinking one of those five-hour energy drinks. Probably not the greatest decision I've ever made, but here we are. You guys watch the game? Any of you folks watch the game tonight? All right, here we go. Now we're rocking and rolling. All right, so it's um been a pretty busy week with news, right? We've had a lot of stuff come out. Them wild-ass pictures with uh, Jeffrey Epstein and the kid in his lap. Glenn Maxwell going ham, trying to get everything uh, thrown out, just acting like a complete maniac. Ah, uh, Lucian, I get it, bro. No doubt about it. Sports takes precedent for me, too. So that's why we're late tonight because of the ball game. So even though it wasn't my team, as a Ra I mean, as a uh, Jets fan, we don't ever have to worry about any of that. But it's always, uh, you know, got to have those things you look forward to, right? Can't be all business all the time. Got to have a couple of things to look forward to in life. I haven't watched uh, WWE in quite some time, but I used to, oh, I used to love it when I was a kid. Yo, the halftime show, people are like bagging the halftime show. I dug it. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought The weekend did a pretty good job. I mean, he looked like Richard Pryor and all, dressed like Richard Pryor in that red suit, but I thought he did a good job. The music was good. The production was good. He wasn't singing to track. I thought that was pretty enjoyable, honestly. And I usually don't like the halftime shows. I'm usually like very anti-halftime show in general. It's just stupid. There's, I guess when, when there's no bets for me to place... I'm not a fan, right? <laughs> but this uh, this week has been wild with uh, Jeffrey Epstein news. I mean, you look at some of the things that have been coming out this week, and it is quite apparent that things are moving quickly behind the scenes right now. That's for sure. Yeah, Connecticut. I have a, a lot of family in Connecticut. I like Connecticut. Great place. Head out every now and then. Go visit the visit them out at um, in Milford Beach. You know, I'm from New York originally, so. 
Hey, what's up, Jen? Hey, Lisa, I didn't even see you ladies sneak in. I mean, Kamantha, how can't you love their podcast? It's fantastic. Jen and Lisa are top-notch human beings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, there is a lot going on all over the world, there's no doubt. I just got an, uh, an email question about Afghanistan and um, Joe Biden's plan there, but we're not going to dive into that on this podcast right now. Hey, <laughs> Jen, for, you know what? You guys know. You guys know how I feel already. I mean, there's not very many other podcasts that I tune into when it comes to content regarding Jeffrey Epstein, but I definitely uh, really love your guys' podcast a lot, a lot. That is exactly it, Rob. That's that same party that all those tool bags went to. And the fact that um, Chelsea Handler isn't getting ridden harder over this is just ridiculous. I pointed that out earlier in uh, this morning's drop. Uh, you know, why is she getting a pass? You know, she's there. She's refurbishing his image. It's after he had already been convicted. So there's really not even any tenable defensive ground there. So I don't even know why people interviewing her wouldn't go hard in the paint. At the very least, does it always have to be softballs? Nobody cares about the questions you asked Woody Allen. Don't try and divert the attention to Woody Allen. We all know that dude's a sick bastard. But what about you? Why are you there? Yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't understand the deal, right? If I was Rob Lowe, at the very least, I'd try and dig a little bit under the surface. All right, well, you were there. He was already convicted. What was Katie Couric and George Stepanopoulos doing there? Mr. Ivory Tower himself. I mean, if he can reach the, the gates with his clogs on. Little half-man looking ass. I despise George Stepanopoulos. I mean, with a passion. And all of these other people, like Chelsea Handler and the people that were there to get close to uh, old Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, they're all just as reprehensible, in my opinion. Everybody knew what he was when they went to this party. Oh, oh we had no idea. So even if you were absolutely moronic and you had no idea about the other things Epstein was up to, you're going to go to a, the house of some dude who was soliciting children for prostitution? That sounds like the kind of guy you want to go and break bread with, right? Oh, yeah, you know, we could, we could put, just put that in the past. I'm going to come here and break some bread with Jeffrey Epstein. He's a decent guy. You know, he, he deserves a second chance. They're all sick, dude. They're all, they're, they're, there's something wrong with these people. You know, I remember that, Rob, but... When it comes to stuff like that, I don't, I never really dug deep, so I don't have all of the details. But I remember hearing about uh, Rob Lowe and those, and that young chick, the 16-year-old girl. And I'm sure that that was pretty prevalent back in the day, right? That was something that happened quite a bit. And yeah, Rob says, so maybe birds of a feather. And at, at the very least, fellow travelers, perhaps. These people, they, they just don't seem to care. The only thing that is unforgivable is if you're poor. That's the only thing unforgivable in so-called polite society. Everything else is okay. Doesn't matter what crimes you commit, who you steal from, who you rob from, who you human traffic, obviously. Doesn't matter. If you can help and move somebody's idea forward or provide financial support for somebody, then you're welcome right back into the club. It doesn't matter if you were raping kids, touching kids, molesting women. They'll make excuses for you. And like George Carlin said, and like we repeat so many of us so often, it's a big old club and we're not invited, right? They get up there and they act like, you know, they care about the people and, and making sure, you know, different 
um, organizations are being represented as far as, oh, well, we stand against human trafficking and we stand against uh, abuse of women, but yet they're going to Jeffrey Epstein's house, helping old boy refurbish his image. So they can miss me with all of that shit and stay in the other lane because I'm tired of it. Hypocrisy, you know, 2020 was the year that the predators turned into the prey. And 2021 is the year that hypocrisy is getting spun on its head. I'm so sick of it. I'm so tired of it. And these people sit there and they fire off all of this nonsense. And then when they're in a position to stand up and actually, you know, make a, a, a tangible contribution to saying enough is enough, well, instead of doing that, they go and they hang out with people like Epstein or Weinstein. So it's just lip service from these people. So they can miss me with all of that bullshit. Rob says, what's the scoop on a doe outright suing Kellen? Is that legit? You know, Rob, I'm not too sure. I haven't um, dug too deep today. I've been caught up pretty much all day. I went, uh, I went to the mountains with Carrie and her friend, and then we, I had the Super Bowl. So I've kind of taken the day off from social media and stuff. So I'm, I'll dig into that after, and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you on that. Yeah, no, there's definitely going to be more suits that, um, that see, what's going to happen, in my opinion, is a lot of these girls are going to suspend their participation in the compensation fund, and they're going to go after these co-conspirators one at a time then. If, if there's not any money with the, within the fund anymore, then their only due course is to chase these, these people down personally and sue them in a court of law. Yeah, no, for sure there were, Jen, but I'm talking about now, though, with the fund freezing. There's going to be a shift, and I know how a lot of these lawyers roll, and they're going to want to pursue this, even though the fund might be frozen. Well, that doesn't mean that Glenn Dubin's money's frozen. That doesn't mean that, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell's, whoever, right? They're going to they're gonna just try and go after whoever they can at this point. And the whole point of the compensation fund was to coalesce all of that, right? Make it all just one case and try and get everybody paid out in an expedited manner as opposed to clogging up the court system. And now that's definitely going to happen if there's a bunch of different suits going off then they're going to have to be heard at different times, right? So it's going to clog things up and slow it down. My hope is that the court steps in, takes over the estate, and figures out a way to get the compensation fund moving again. I think that's the best course for everybody as far as um, expediting the process. But short of that, then, I think that these girls are well within their rights to go after these guys on a personal level. Pop says, it seems the criminal enterprise is carrying on normally. $650 million have paid, $650 million have paid out $50 million to hush funds. Seems funds must still be being paid out to elites to protect the enterprise. And you know, look, I'm not too sure where the funds are going or what's happening with them. I don't think anybody is at this point. And Indyke and Khan being the executors, that proves to be a very big problem and an impediment and certainly, certainly calls into question the transparency and the truthfulness of the estate. So we know that only $50 million has been paid out to the survivors thus far. Now we know that the government, the federal government, has already taken $200 million. So... The jackass American federal government, they got their cut before the girls even. And it's an absolute shame in my part, in my opinion. So I think that the court needs to step in right away and they need to take that money and power from Indyke and Khan and they need to facilitate the distribution of the rest of those funds within the compensation program that has been set forward. Anna Maria says, how, yeah, how, how have they stopped it? Let's see here. Oh. How much of the executors spent or stashed? And again, I don't know. Who knows? I'm sure a lot. We know that they have um, their, their fingers involved offshore. 
So how much do they have stashed in these LLCs, in these different um, holdings that they had? You know, when they were moving money around down there and they were involved and you're involved in laundering money, everybody's getting some points, right? Everybody involved in the scam is getting some points. So obviously Epstein's getting his points. A large majority of the points go to the people who come up with the plan. But the people who facilitate it, people like Indyke and Khan and the rest of them, these dudes are bag men. So what's happening is these dudes are getting points off of each and every deal. So every time money gets laundered, they, their deal might be they get 2% coming in. So that money that's coming in obviously isn't being reported to the um, IRS. So how do we know what sort of fundage these people really have and where those funds are being stashed? So it really becomes a, a cat and mouse game, a forensic cat and, cat and mouse game. And I just really hope that the government's up to the task, right? Like we always talk about, if you follow the money, eventually it's going to lead to some shitbag politician. So I just hope that the, the, the government is really digging in forensically the right way. Yeah, look, when, when people are laundering money, it's the same no matter who's doing it for the most part. The, the parameters are the same and the way people are getting paid is the same. And everybody's wetting their beak, right? It's not just the original money man, say Jeffrey Epstein, who's being enriched here. Everybody's getting pieced off a little bit for their part in the criminal enterprise and also because obviously when you piece them off, now they're involved. They have skin in the game. If they try and rat, well, you know. Pop says, Bobby, do we need to have a tag day for Darren and Richard? It may be harder for them than you think. You know, these two characters, Indyke and Khan, are a big problem here. And they have been a big problem here. And how they are involved with this estate, I will never know. I can never... There's no justification anybody can provide to me for how these people are still in charge of the estate. It is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling at best. No, um, Lucian says, what if they go after the brother? He can't walk away. And that, I agree with that. I don't think that Mark Epstein can walk away here. I think that if they wanted to charge him criminally, and they might still, who knows, going forward, I think that they could financially, right? There's enough money wrapped up between Epstein and his brother that you could make the case that he was part of this criminal enterprise. And in fact, if this was a regular RICO case, they would make that case right away. And they'd seize his money, they'd freeze it, the whole nine. But... That doesn't happen to people like Epstein, obviously. You, only, you have to have a vowel at the end of your name for that to happen in this country. Indyke and Pop, more, Pop says, who is in charge of, his, of this estate? And it is Indyke and Khan. But it really should be the court, right? Indyke and Khan should definitely not be in charge of the estate. They should be force, forcefully removed if, if, if they have to be. And they should be charged under RICO. So if they would charge them under RICO, then I don't think that we would even have to have this conversation, right? I think they would be removed as the executors right away if they were char charged under RICO statutes. And then the court would facilitate and decide how this money is distributed. And I think that's the best course at this point. Because Indyke and Khan certainly cannot be trusted. They were in on the scam. They were in on the, 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 the thievery. Jen says, they should never have been allowed to handle it. And she's right. They shouldn't have been. There's, no, there's just no sound reasoning behind a decision like that. And I don't know how that was ever allowed by the lawyers for the survivors. I would have fought that tooth and nail. Right? You got to pick your battles, obviously. And you can't fight like a, you know, cornered badger at every turn. But certain things need to be fought for, and I certainly think that should have been one of them. Yeah, well, you know, 
there is no ethics within the system here in America, unfortunately. And in fact, if you just take a look worldwide, there's, no, there's nobody who's ethical in just about any government at this point. Look, look what's going on around the world. Look at all the people that have had enough. Pop says, Bobby, hate to disagree, but one has to think someone else is in charge. Uh, you know, we can think whatever you want, you know, Pop, and, and I'm not saying that it's not the case. I just have not seen the evidence to point me in that direction yet. So until I see that evidence, I just got to, uh, I try and roll with the, uh, the punches as they are. And I try not to, to, to get too ahead of myself, right? There's, uh, I think there's enough, you know, speculation on stuff like this that... I will continue just to stick to the format we have here, right? Not delve too deep into the waters of, well, who's pulling the strings at the very top? I think that if we work our way up, nail the core four, Endike and Khan, that'll lead to more lips moving and more curtains being pulled open for us to have a look inside, right? But you're not far off. We know that this is vast. We know that it goes higher. And Indyke and Khan could very well just be beards here. Very possible. It is very possible. We don't really know enough about what's going on with this estate. Well, that's not too difficult, Jen. I mean, you know, Jen says a lot is just distraction or disinfo to keep us off the real, the real game. And it's true. All you have to do is take a look at that cesspool of Twitter and some of the nonsense people are firing off all over the place. It's absolutely ridiculous. People talking all kinds of nonsense. I don't have any time for it and I just skip by it. But it really clouds the water when, you know, people are making these baseless, far, far off, stupid claims. It just, it really does just, just muddy the waters. Rob says, the appeals court only has another four months to decide if the NPA will be rescinded before Ghislaine's trial. If that, if that was rescinded, would it affect the rules for applying to the fund? You know, I'm not too sure, Rob. There might be some um, small print within the actual contract that was signed for the fund, and there might be something that would let them go back and revisit it. I am not too sure, though. Jen, it all really started with the purge that, that took place after the so-called insurrection, I guess you want to call it. I mean, I call it the Duck Dynasty dudes hanging out, but whatever. So that was the beginning of it. And I said then that that was going to be the, the, the inroad for them with their censorship. And they're going to do it. They're going to flood it. They're going to... They feel like they have been emboldened now. They feel like they have been emboldened now. Pop says, the U.S. took their taxes. Do you not think the Virgin Islands in the U.S. could freeze these assets and stop this criminal enterprise? You know, I think that th these assets should have been frozen a long time ago. I, I said when it all first started that I didn't like all of the spending on the so-called upkeep of the property. What does that even mean? Go hire a couple of dudes to come in and trim some leaves. How much does it cost? John's lawn service down the block needs some work. Give them a call. So I don't, I don't understand about all the upkeep. And then with the plane and shit, oh, well, we have to make sure it's flight worthy. Well, what does that mean? Sell it at a discount if it's not flight worthy. How much does it cost to have a mechanic come in and make sure that nothing's loose? So obviously I think all of these books should be audited. Every single dollar that, should, that was spent should be audited. And again, Indyke and Khan are obviously piecing money off on the side. There's no doubt that these dudes are snakes. Yeah, those people don't even bother contacting me, Jen. I don't even bother with it. I, w I don't even open mail from people like that.
Rob says, those photos of either Indyke or Khan leaving the New York mansion, they have explaining to do. Hell yeah. And not just those photos, but let's remember that Darren Indyke was the in-house lawyer. So that means everything that was happening in the whole enterprise, pretty much, Indyke was involved in. You know, his name is, is just littered across so many of these papers. And when you're talking about a criminal, criminal enterprise, well, he is smack dab in the middle of it. And if the United States government is going to talk about evoking the RICO Act against the people from the Capitol, and they do it before they evoke it on Jeffrey Epstein's people, that just goes to show you where things are at, folks. Because if anyone has ever deserved to be slapped in the mouth with a RICO case, it is these clowns right here and right now. Jen says, what's in the blue bag? For sure, who the hell knows what was in that bag when Indyke, and, or Indyke I believe it was. Or was it Khan? One or the other. Either way, when, when one of those knuckleheads left and they had the bag full of stuff, what was in it? Why were they allowed to do that? Why wasn't the house considered a crime scene? Why wasn't it seized? Why wasn't it taped up? There's just so many questions. And still, as we speak, out at Zorro Ranch, you got people running around at Zorro Ranch like they're having, uh, it, it's the fire festival. Why do you need 966 stagehands running around at a defunct farm? Yeah, you know, Jen says, and the fact that they changed cars around the corner. You know, it cracks me up. These guys were playing spy games, right? But he's so stupid that he goes to the same ATM machine 97 times, not hyperbole, 97 times, and structures the withdrawals for 7,500 bones for each time. As if nobody knows what you're doing. Nobody has any idea that you're structuring. He walks in and he talks to the people about structuring even. You mean to tell me that this dude made no other mistakes along the way, huh? Rob says, I'm thinking hard drives. It actually looks like both the dudes leaving have these square-like things that kind of resemble hard drives. Zoom in unless two different dudes were carrying their wallet. Yeah, look, I, it, does, it does look goofy. I agree 100%. I don't, I have no idea what was in those bags. I wish I knew. I wish I knew. Yeah, that's exactly what they claim, Jen. Clothes for the funeral, but we all know, I mean, really? These are the kind of people, they don't go get old clothes. They go to the store and buy a new, a new get-up for the day. Pop says, why were not all these properties seized when Jeffrey Epstein was arrested? Good question, Pop. Been asking that same question now for, oh, I don't know, every single night for 18 months. The second he was arrested, all of it should have been frozen. The government should have seized everything, and then they should have auctioned it off. All that money should have went into that compensation fund, and then if anything was left, then the government should have got their piece then. But like everything else in this country and in this world, everything's ass backwards. Nothing works the way it should. And everything's set up to benefit these scumbags in the so-called corridors, corridors of the elite. And the rest of us are left holding the bag and paying the bill while these dudes are laundering, you know, 18 points on every 100,000 that they launder. Lucian says, I wonder who else will perish due to this. I don't know. I mean, it really comes down to who starts talking, right? When we start getting more indictments, whoever is talking, they might have a chance of being in peril. I mean, again, we don't know. We don't know what is going to happen or what's going on behind the scenes at this point. Um, I would think that there is a lot of songs being sung right now. MC says the Fed should have been in place before he was arrested so nothing could go missing. That's usually how it works, right? 
They coordinate all of that shit. They arrest him. They have a team there that's arresting him. At the very same time that he's being arrested, they're serving the, ser the search warrant at his properties. That way there's no chance for them to coordinate to get rid of evidence. But that wasn't what happened. It should have been every single property at every single point. But they, for some reason, and they have not given us a good reason to this day, did not do that. Rob says, has it been confirmed the little girl was Dubin's kid? Um, it has not been confirmed. There has been some strong suggestions to that being the case. Anna Maria says, is this about the little girl in the pic that came out? Uh, yeah, that's what Rob is talking about for sure. Um, there, look, we don't know for sure who that the person in the picture is, right? There are some strong suggestions that it, it could be Dubin's kid, but we don't know for sure, right? We can speculate, but until we have direct evidence one way or the other, who knows? What I will say is this. The fact that that little girl was passed out in his lap like that, that is not normal behavior for a girl of that age. I don't know why any parent would be okay with that. Yeah, MC, that, you know, that's up to Virginia to disclose, though. You know, whatever, whatever Virginia wants to do with that information, I'll let her, uh, you know, do what she has to do with that. As far as I know, as of now, nothing has been confirmed or um, put out in the media anyway that confirms that it's Glenn Dubin's daughter. But when you look at the situation, you look at how close they were to the Dubins, you know Jeffrey Epstein had this fascination with Cecilia Dubin. So, the pieces kind of make sense, right? That would be her, Mr. Rob. The same one that Uncle Jeffy said he was going to marry. Yep. How disgusting is it to even type those words? Saying them disgusts me to no end. The fact that Jeffrey Epstein was even allowed near these people's kids is unbelievable. Nope, sorry, Jen, I disagree. I'm, I disagree. A day at Disneyland might lead to passing out like that. Passing out in some guy's lap, though? He has no nieces. He has no nephews. You let your daughter pass out in your friend's lap like that? I mean, if you do, I, I hope it's a really good friend. But for me, I know for a fact that shit would never happen in my family. This would, that would never, ever happen in my family. There's no chance that my parents would ever let me or my sister or lay, lay in his lap. But it, it, it's not Mark's kid, though. But it's not Mark's kid. That's the thing. So, I mean, I've passed out like that after going to Disneyland, too. But not in somebody's lap like that. I don't think, it's just, it's, it's very odd to me. It's not normal. And especially for a dude that doesn't have kids, right? He's not, you know. So the only thing that would make sense is if it was Dubin's kid. That's my opinion. So, I don't, you know, I don't think that when you look at the whole story, why would they be all excited, you know, if it was uh, Mark's daughter? Because they have this luxury around them all the time, right? There are all the time they could go, they can do whatever they want. They have all the money in the world. So, I don't know. It just, none of it makes sense. I don't know who would let their kid pass out in old boy's lap like that. But that shit is not normal. Rob says, do we know who released the photos? No, we don't know. I mean, as of now, we don't know. At least I don't. I mean, people out there might know who it is. You know, obviously the people on that flight know. There's people out there who definitely know who it was. But again, who the hell knows? For me, though, I, I just, I don't know. It's not, it, that's not the normal way... Things would ever go in my family for sure. They're, you're not passing out. I don't have. We don't have family friends like that who you're passing out in their lap at 12 or 13 years old. It's just weird as shit.
Yeah, I hope so too, Jen. I really hope whoever that, that kid was, I hope it was, wasn't something that was draconian, right? I hope it was, like you said, maybe it was his niece. I, that, that would be preferable, right? And as opposed to some, some, some kid that he's abusing. But when we t look at everything that we know about this man and the way he conducts himself, the way he conducted himself, um, it just doesn't seem like it's an innocuous situation where it's just, ah, uh, you know, just, just happens to be some, some kid passed out in his lap. Yeah, you know, I, I just can't, I can't bring those two together and say, ah, oh, yeah, that, that, that makes sense to me because it's just too weird, too weird to me. And again, that might just be from my own experiences, right? My, the, own, the, the way I was raised and the way I would think that other people would go about things because I know if I had a, a kid that age, she wouldn't be sleeping in anyone's lap, to be honest with you. Hey, what's up, Jerry? Jerry says, any idea if brother Mark Epstein is under investigation? There is nothing that has been out in the public that he's under investigation, but I would think that he is under the microscope. Jen says, I really don't want to go there if it wasn't his niece. It just breaks my soul. Jen, agree. Look, I mean, it's one of the most horrific things that we have seen thus far in this case as far as an ocular representation. We haven't seen pictures like that for the most part. We've seen Epstein with, you know, older girls or... But that picture is so chilling because we know the sort of monster he is. And that little girl just laying across his lap like that, it elicits a very visceral reaction, right? So as normal people, right, well-adjusted people, we don't want to think that it's as monstrous as it probably is. You know, Occam's razor and all. When it comes to Jeffrey Epstein, one thing I have learned is that nothing can be put past this dude. And who the hell knows the story about that flight, about that picture, about that girl. But what I will tell you is this. Looking back on it in hindsight is one of the most terrifying things that we have seen come out in this case, in my opinion. So, I don't, uh, I'm interested to see what comes out as far as moving forward, more, what information comes out about that, um, about that picture, what more we learn, you know, uh, if, if the person who took the picture ever comes out and goes public, if, um, the pictures are maybe subpoenaed and used in the case, who knows, right? So, it's interesting to see as everything moves a little bit further, how much more stuff starts to trickle out. And I'm of the opinion that right now we're just getting these little, you know, cracks in the dam, but eventually it's just going to burst and all of the information is just going to come piling out. And I think we're, we're getting closer and closer to that point as the days go by. Because if you look at the way that the case is going and you look at the interest in the case and how it's growing... I mean, there are only so many secrets that can be kept. And going back to uh, Jerry's question about Epstein's brother, that falls into that category for me. Now, we know that there's investigation going on behind the scenes. We know that uh, the pilot, uh, uh, Rogers, has already been cooperating with the FBI. We know that Adam Perry Lang has been cooperating with the FBI. And we know that there's probably several more people who are cooperating behind the scenes. So who knows if anyone has dished on Mark Epstein by now? Probably. But one thing is certain. His finances were wrapped up with Jeffrey Epstein's. And they can certainly use that as a vector to go after him. Rob says, only four more months until Jizzy is tried. They better pick up the pace. Yeah, I hear that. They most certainly better pick up the pace because it's almost time. 
Yeah, you know, Jen, I don't, I don't have as much faith in Vysotsky being as uh, being um, truthful. I think that him and Epstein were a little bit closer than is being reported. There's more there, and I think that this idiot living on Epstein's property in Zorro Ranch with his own 40 acres, I think that tells the tale. I think Viskovsky's one of those guys that's going to go down with the ship. Now, Rogers, on the other hand, I think is going to dish. But Vysovsky, on the other hand, I don't know what kind of um, charges that they can hold over his head right now. If they have something over him, then he'll, I think he'll rat. But if they don't have anything on him criminally, I don't think that they'll be able to, to really press him. But Rogers, on the other hand, I think he's singing a song right now that would make Joe Valachi blush. This dude is definitely talking. Anna says, any more info on pilot number three? Nope, Anna, still, I haven't really heard too much about that. Yeah, he definitely has that, that, uh, that private LLC, no doubt. Look, all of it is funky. And it really, like I've said from the beginning, it depends on what the federal government wants to do. How much backbone do they have? How much wherewithal do they have? Do they want to go all the way? Because if they want to go all the way, the, the, the breadcrumbs are there. The financial crimes have all been engaged in for years. So they just got to go hard in the paint. But it depends. Are they going to do it? If they do it, then all bets are off. But... We don't know. I, I really don't know what to expect from uh, Garland Merrick and 46's Department of Justice. So far, I am certainly not impressed, but we'll have to see. Yep, 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 that's for sure too. There's no doubt that Sarah Kellen Vickers is somebody who is one of the top targets at this point in my opinion. She's certainly somebody who is being keyed in on and I wouldn't be surprised if she's already cooperating because they have her on a, a whole heap load of, of stuff. So I would definitely expect to see her end up as a witness against Ghislaine Maxwell. That's certainly a prediction I'm making. I don't really get into the prediction business too often, but uh, I'm pretty sure that we'll see Sarah Kellen Vickers take the stand against Ghislaine Maxwell so that she can try and wriggle free. Yeah, that young blonde girl was like uh, the prime minister, the ex-prime minister of Australia's daughter, I believe. So, we know that Epstein had that house, that that party especially when they were there for Prince Andrew. That was just filled with all kinds of famous people. And obviously, the Chelsea Handler stuff. Uh, it, it's just, it's just wild, bro. It's wild how many people were involved with him. It's wild how many people were uh, 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 covering for him, and it's wild how many people were engaging in the same behavior that this dude was engaging in. Yeah, you know, I don't get into all of that, what she's doing there and all of that jazz. It's just, I don't find all of that interesting. The, uh, the, the chasing rich men and... and the, for me, here, the, here's the two things I'm worried about at this point in this case. Two things I care about. A, the core four, Indyke, Khan, and Maxwell, they go to jail. And B, that the financial portion of this case is chased down. After, after that happens, I think everything else is you know, playing with house money. Exactly, Jen, and that's why, if you've noticed, I've pivoted away from all of that stuff. I don't even bother with it anymore. 
any sort of nonsensical, salacious BS, I just try and, and steer clear. I think the, the, the more interesting facet of this case is the way that they were able to move money around and so freely move money around. It is just unbelievable to me. Yeah, that's right. Scott Borgerson, your cousin from Boston. I mean, is that fitting or what? The dude's an absolute tool. He is. They should have just used him for that commercial instead of that guy that they used. Because Borger, uh, Borgerson was born for that commercial, boys and girls. Yeah, and you know, Jen, you see it right away. You and you and Lisa have seen it from the jump. You see the way that they try and throw people off the trail. They try and uh, drop some breadcrumbs of some salacious nonsense that can't be corroborated or substantiated. And then they hope people run with that so they can say, hey, look, look at the conspiracy theorists. Look at the weirdos. That's what they want. They don't want people searching out the real shit in this case. They don't want people chasing down... Epstein's uh, offshore accounts. They don't want uh, people chasing down Epstein's connections to Mossack Fonseca. They don't want people chasing down Epstein's connections to what was going on in the Finson files. They don't want that because that's where the meat and the potatoes lay. Yeah, at, if, if Rico goes down, will your cousin from Boston get picked up, Lucian asks. Yeah, if they get caught up in a Rico case, he's certainly in jeopardy. I mean, he's come out and said his assets are mixed with Ghislaine Maxwell's. So I am sure that if she gets slapped with Rico, then his assets will be frozen as well, at the very least, until they figure it out. If they figure out that he's a non-participant or that he hasn't been um, enriched by ill-gotten gains then maybe they'll unfreeze his account and let him go. But it takes forever. I know people that were caught up in RICO cases that lasted two or three years where they've had, they had accounts frozen, they, weren't had, they didn't have access to uh, uh, credit cards. It was, it's crazy. Victoria says, where the, where the, uh, WTF are all the journalists chasing the money? You know, that's a good question too, Victoria, and it makes you wonder, do they really want to find the answers? If they really wanted to find the answers and they wanted to chase this money, they have the resources to do so. And you see with the, uh, the consortium that if you put your mind to it and you get to work, you can, you can find people who are willing to talk to you about what's going on behind the scenes. But the legacy media is not interested in that. They're not interested in outing all of their friends. Why would they be? Why would they be interested in outing the people whose house they're going to eat dinner at? Like Jeffrey Epstein. Yo, the New York Academy is an absolute joke. They should have their doors closed. The shit that they've been engaged in for years is, is a travesty. The whole entire art world is legitimately disgusting. Every single time I read an article about these people, I'm like, how in the world are they able to operate like this? There's never been an audit of these people? We're talking about billions of dollars. But if you have a few, uh, few bucks of crypto coins in your, in your wallet, well, you could expect the IRS to come asking some questions. Ah, but yeah, billions of dollars being laundered, no big deal. You don't even have to sign any paperwork for that. Push it through, boys. It's, it's just it's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. And the New York uh, Academy, they obviously benefited from um, Jeffrey Epstein's ill-gotten gains, 100%. Jen says, we're hoping to get over, but doubt we will be allowed to get there for the trial. We may be, we may be able to swing a special visa due to our background, but safety-wise, probably not later uh, until later in the year. I will be there for sure, Jen. Thankfully, I have family in New York, 
So I will be um, arriving in New York a few days before the trial, getting myself settled in, and then I'll be spending um, the days that the trial is underway, which is obviously Monday through Friday, close to the city, and then the weekends I'll be spending up in the Catskill Mountains. So I'll be doing some live streams from down there as well. Um, I have a couple of uh, people I'll be linking up with, a photographer and a couple of other people to, uh, you know, help me out and get some footage and stuff of this so we can document the whole thing. And I plan on staying for the whole trial. So usually something like this will last about a month. And I have it locked in right now to stay there for roughly five weeks. So who knows? We'll see. Um... I hope that there is a break in this pandemic and, you know, the vaccines start to really take hold and start to work so that you and Lisa can get over, you know, it will be great. I'd love to be able to uh, sit down with you ladies, take you to a couple fantastic restaurants in New York and, and really get going. Uh, hey, Lucian, yeah, you know, I'll be down at that uh, courthouse every single day. So I'm totally not adverse to people wanting to meet up, you know, grab a coffee or something like that. Um, I don't drink alcohol, so I, I'm not, you know, going to the bar to get drunk or anything. But I'll definitely be down to uh, meet up and, and, you know, talk with you guys in person and all of that, all of that jazz. Jen says, I reckon it will go longer, meaning the trial. And if it goes longer, then I'll readjust, right? I'll, uh, I'll probably stay a little bit longer then. You know, here's, here's where I'm at, at this point. I'm at the point right now where I want to see this through, all the way through the Maxwell portion, right? Once the Maxwell trial is over, then I'm going to start taking a step back from this. Um, I'm still going to cover it, obviously, but we're going to be doing only a couple of episodes a week as opposed to every single day. I've dedicated every single day of my life since October of 2019 to this case and this story and, and to chasing justice for these girls and for everybody, right? For all of us. So after the, the, the trial ends, I'm definitely taking a step back from this and I'm going to be focusing on other podcasts, but we're going to be focusing on some less heavy shit. No doubt about it. Rob says, I'm going to try and make it. That'll be great. Like I said, when I'm in New York, you know, whoever wants to link up, you guys want to meet up after the trial down in the city somewhere and, you know, BS down at Central Park and, you know, talk about the case. I'm all for it. I mean, especially all of you that come to this live stream, right? It's not like I'm going to be posting a, uh, a meetup or a, uh, an ad on Craigslist, but for the people that are here every week and talking and we're uh, engaging and interacting, no doubt about it. If you folks want to catch up, have a dirty water dog, a couple uh, couple sodas or something, I am 100% in. <laughs> Anna says live stream it. Hell yeah, we'll definitely get the live stream going, Anna. It'll be a big old party. And like I said, hopefully by July, you know, the vaccine will be kicked in and there'll be a break in the, in, in, in the vid and there'll be a little bit of hope on the horizon for moving forward because I still plan on going to New Mexico too. I'd be going there in a couple of weeks if it wasn't for these restrictions. But with these restrictions, I'm not staying in a hotel for 14 days in New Mexico. Zero chance. I don't even like staying in, in hotels for the few days that I have to go and handle business. Never mind for 14 days watching 30 channels and eating garbage food. And then you have to stay a week later. No way. Never going to happen. Yeah, when Jen says, oh, hell, quarantine. So if you go to, right now, according to the state of New Mexico, if you go there, you have to quarantine for 14 days. Patty says, how do you know? How do I know what there, Patty? Zero chance I'm quarantining, though, for 14 days in a, in a hotel room. Nope. See, in New York, it's different. I can quarantine at my family's house and feel kind of comfortable. Oh, how do I know that Charles hates Joe Exotic? Oh, it's all over. All of the royalists and the monarchists, and it's been the rumor forever. I'm certainly not somebody who follows the royal family super closely besides this case, but 
Charles doesn't want to deal with the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family. Believe that. He's going to try and lance him and send that dude to Timbuktu as far away from the royal family as possible. Rob says, stupid question, but how long would you guess the trial would go? I'm guessing a month, month and a half, tops, something like that. But who knows, there's a lot that could pop up. Now, I plan on trying to pound it out for as long as possible. I mean, um, I could stay as far as accommodations as long as I need to. But financially speaking, we'll have to see, right? As far as, as, far as things go now, I plan on staying for at least six weeks. But anything longer than that, I'll have to readjust because obviously I have bills to pay and shit too. So I have to make sure I'm keeping my responsibilities lined up. Yeah, towards the end will probably be the best, right? When we get that conviction, head on out for a nice, uh, a nice uh, lemonade or something afterwards in celebration. Hell, maybe I'll even have a drink. I'll tell you what, if Ghislaine Maxwell gets convicted... I'll have a couple of drinks even at the bar. How about that? That'll be that'll be my celebration. Patty says, "Who's protecting Slick Willie Bill Clinton? Will he go down in your opinion?" No, I don't think he'll go down. I I, I have zero faith in the legacy media to go after Bill Clinton because this dude is an absolute He's Teflon. The American media wants nothing to do with going after him. I just don't, I don't get it. Now, I think Bill Clinton might get some hard questions, but I don't think our legacy media has the coyones to really go after him. You know, Jen, that's, how, that's funny. I don't have any tattoos, right? Not one tattoo anywhere on my body. If Ghislaine Maxwell gets convicted, I might, even, I might think about it. I might think about getting a tattoo. Yeah, I'm scared of needles for the most part, so I've never, never gotten tatted up. I mean, all of my friends are tatted from, like, head to toe, but I've always been <laughs> scared to get those needles stuck in me, to be honest with you. A kangaroo tattoo, Lucian says, get a kangaroo tattoo. That's pretty funny, Lucian. Maybe I'll get a two-legged serpent tattoo. Get ourselves a... A bipedal serpent walking around tattooed on my ribcage or something. MC says, gotta get drunk first. Yeah, I think you're right about that, MC. I would have to take a couple of shots of the JMO or something before I'm getting a needle stuck in me. Name someone you respect in the legacy media. Is there anyone you have faith in? Um, he's not really in the legacy media anymore. He's kind of got booted out, but Glenn Greenwald is somebody I highly respect. Um, I might not share his opinions all the time, but I respect who he is as a reporter and how he, he shoots straight. He's a pretty uh, a fair guy, and he is somebody who I think is concerned with the truth. Sanderson says, do you ever get harassed by people who support GMAX? Nah, Sanderson, really, nobody, everybody who contacts me is pretty uh, positive about what's going on. And, you know, there's some people who are ridiculous, but I don't engage. So these dudes don't, uh, they don't bother with me because I don't engage with their nonsense. Oh, yeah, Lucian says, Bobby loves Geraldo Rivera, that jackass. What a moron that dude is. Go open up another Al Capone vault and waste our time again, Geraldo. He's still suffering from getting smacked in the face with that chair in 88. A doxing attempt, Jen? Really? Somebody tried to dox you? What the hell is wrong with people? See, I, I, you know, I don't... I don't really think about that kind of stuff because I'm the kind of person... Like, say someone was following me like Ronan Farrow, Right? I would stop my car in the middle of the road, hop out, and ask if they want to fight. Uh, you know, I, 
I'm not one of these journalists and shit. I'm from the inner city, so if we got a problem, we got a problem, and we'll talk about it and see what's what. But I've never had anybody try anything funky. Like, nobody's been sending me harassing messages, or I've never had to deal with any of that, thankfully. You know what it is? The people that talk trash or try and demean you guys, they're just fans. They've never done anything in their lives. They don't, they couldn't put together a podcast if somebody dropped the format in their lap. So instead, they try and demean your work because, oh, well, I got to hate on people. I can't just, you know, I can't give people credit for doing a good job. And there's so many people like that, it's not even funny. Wow, Jen, that's wild, dude. That's crazy. Jen says, searching my physical address on the internet so people can find me. I, you know, for my whole life, I've always said I wish somebody would break into my house because that's what I call a freebie. You break into my house, bro, you're going to have a whole lot of trouble. Same goes for if you show up here uninvited. A... You're going to waste a whole lot of gas and B, you're going to waste a whole lot of time because unless you're invited to my home, I'm not answering my door. And if you show up here with some nonsense, you better get ready to get banged out because you're about to catch that three piece. But people on the internet are wild. I mean, these people are, I mean, who doxes somebody? Who thinks it's a good idea to broadcast somebody's address on the internet? Yeah, this is a great idea. Let me put somebody's address on the internet. Wow, Jen says she even used photos of Lisa and I in her various troll accounts that then go attacking Virginia and Maria to make it seem like we are trolls. Wild. Victoria, go, Victoria says someone broke into Virginia's house. Rob says, I'm sorry, that's horrible. What are the gun, gun rights like over there? Rob, you're just speaking my language, dude. I live in Nevada. Everybody's carrying a gun in Nevada. I saw some dude at Walmart the other day wearing a pair of sweatpants. He was sagging, I swear to you, sagging his pants down, literally past his, his ass, all the way down, and he had a gun in a holster hanging down off of the sweatpants. I was like, bro, what are you doing right now? Talk about not having that thing secured correctly. But everywhere in Nevada, in Nevada everybody has a gun here. And about someone breaking into Virginia's house. That's wild, dude. I can't even imagine. Lisa says, we know who this woman is and we may have to legally deal with her. Hey, I don't blame you. I would too. That's crazy. Hey, Lucien, you can't sag your clothes in New York City. It's a $75 fine, but you can break into a store on Fifth Avenue and gank a bunch of shit. That's cool, right? <laughs> Crazy. AJF, hey, what's up, bro? Yeah, you definitely know. You live here in Nevada, too. Everybody's carrying a gun in Nevada. I mean, old ladies have a twenty-five in their purse, and I don't blame them. It's the wild, wild west out here. Las Vegas has become a dangerous-ass place. Jen says, we don't want guns, not after 1996 and a horrific shooting spree in Tassel. People handed in their semi and automatic guns. It's a cultural difference. Yeah, definitely a cultural difference, no doubt about it. Um, America, we're a different beast. We're, you know, a whole different kind of country. So I get it that a lot of other countries aren't into it, but here in America, we have to, we, you know... All of those amendments have to be respected, in my opinion. Because once we start dicking around with one of them, who knows how far they go. I don't know how many times I have to talk about the slippery slope that we're on. 
Hey, you know, Jen, it's good to have the training, right? Jen says, but I also have gun training, so go figure. It's good to have the training. Hopefully you never need it, but at least you have that training, God forbid, you know? And that's the way I look at it as well. Personally, I don't own a gun, but I, I understand why people have them, and I am completely in support of the Second Amendment, 100%. Jen says, the rumors are true. I was a military operative in my past life. You know, that's pretty funny. I thought I saw you in the invasion of Afghanistan riding a horse going into uh, Kandahar. You wild beast, you. Yeah, I hear you, AJF. I'm at the point now where I'm definitely thinking about buying a gun, buying the first one ever. Um, I, you know, we're just in a, a real wild stage of our country. And I think it's a prudent idea to have one. Lucian says, the fact that Robert Maxwell would piss out a window and use towels as toilet paper should show you how he raises children. Oh, there's no doubt. Can you imagine being raised in that household? I can't even imagine what went on. Absolutely sickening. The the things that she must have learned at good old dad's side, right? Yeah, there's a... Rob says, the gun stores in my area have about two or three between them. So, there's a lot of places like that where the guns are selling out. 100%. Here in Vegas, uh, it's still pretty easy to, to get a gun right now in Vegas, but I've heard from a lot of people elsewhere that it's been a difficult task, and I hear ammo is pretty difficult to get right now as well. Again, I'm not a gun aficionado. I mean, you know, I know the basics of how to handle a gun, but as far as that goes, I'm not, you know, I'm not a card-carrying member of the NRA or anything like that. Yeah, every time that a Democrat wins, Jen, it's the same thing. There, a bunch of guns get sold, and, you know, the, the cycle c continues over and over and over again. It never fails. I think January, though, was like one of the biggest uh, months. I think they sold like 2.2 .2 million guns in January or something like that. For sure, Rob. You know, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to grab a couple myself. I'm going to get a shotgun, a handgun. Um... You know, I think it's just a prudent thing to have at this point to defend your family, right? At the end of the day, you know, someone comes in here with a weapon, what, what am I going to do? You know, there's only uh, so much you can do with your hands if somebody has, has, has a weapon. So I just think it's a prudent idea to, uh, to have a, a, a firearm in the home. Anthony says, honestly, we've always been really gun-friendly here in Nevada, possibly more so than Texas. And Virgin City, Nevada, you know, the Wild West, 100%. Nevada has been a gun-friendly place forever. I mean, this is the kind of place where if you're a gun enthusiast, this is the kind of place you want to live for sure. Jen says, I want a BB gun to scare the birds out of the trees when we record. We tried throwing balls at them. It didn't work. You know what you got to get? Just go get yourself a Peregrine Falcon. Send Lisa to Peregrine Falcon uh, hunting school, and then she can show up with her falcon on her wrist, and she can just, you know, get all the birds out of the trees by sending her falcon after them. Like it was the 11th century, and she was one of William the Conqueror's friends.
Sanderson says, I'm a Canadian. I have a true crime YouTube channel called True, true Crime Jesus. Everybody go check out Sanderson's work too, True Crime Jesus. I investigate the Delphi murders. I'm going to make some Epstein Maxwell videos, but there's so much information that I don't even know where to start. What aspects of the Epstein case do you think aren't talked about enough that need to be? Also, if I was going to do my own probing about Epstein's sex traffic in Mon trafficking in Montreal, where would be a good place to start? You know, Sanderson, that's a really good question. Why don't you shoot me an email at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com and we can go uh, in depth a little bit more about that question. I'd love to help you out and see if we could, uh, you know, hammer out some of the Montreal stuff together because it's a very interesting scenario for me as well. And I'd love to get a bit deeper into Epstein's uh, nonsense within Montreal because he was certainly active up there. So is Ghislaine Maxwell. And there is a story that most certainly should be told there. So definitely shoot me an email and uh, let's talk a little bit more about that and get a little bit deeper into that. Jen, he should have taken your slingshot. You're, you, sh you shouldn't have power tools or any sort of weaponry that can shoot an eye out. I know how you are. You're like a sniper with that thing. Sanderson says, I will, brother. I'd love to work on this together, looking into this. I got boots on the ground there. Hell yeah, hit me up, bro. Let's, let's, let's collaborate a little bit and let's see what we can find out. <laughs> AGF says, don't, dude, get post-medieval on an mf or buy yourself a blunderbuss and do some real damage. Honestly, black powder shooting is a fun time. Yeah, I'll be like, like one of the pirates in like Black Sails, one of those guns that they had, right? Them dudes were blasting holes in people with those things. Yeah, so it'll be, we'll be back to the 7 p.m. starts uh, starting next week, but tonight, because of the Super Bowl, I started a little bit later. I wanted to make sure I had enough time after the game ended so I wasn't rushing around and, uh, you know, stumbling all over myself like a moron. Hey, thanks, Lisa. You know what? I'm about to wrap it up, too, so... Thank you, Lisa, for popping in like usual. I will talk to you very soon. I'll uh, shoot you a message. We have some stuff to talk about for sure. Me, you, and Jen have some things to collaborate on. Um, it's been too long since we've sat down and had a, a discussion, so let's do that in the next few weeks. And um, yeah, have a great night, Lisa. It's always a pleasure to see you and talk to you. Hey, what's up, Elizabeth? Oh, man. A little late to the party tonight. I'm getting ready to wrap up. We're not doing our usual two hours tonight since I started a little late. So I'm going to be wrapping up in about five minutes tonight. And um, we'll be back, obviously, next Sunday. Oh, we've been all over the place tonight, Elizabeth. We've been everywhere from guns. We've been obviously diving into the Epstein stuff. You'll have to go back and watch the video from the beginning and catch up. Super Bowl 2, that's right. Hey, thanks, Anna. It's always awesome to have you jump into the live streams. I really appreciate you popping in and supporting the podcast the way you do. You're really an awesome person. Thank you so much. Hey, what's up, Elizabeth? Quick question for me before I go. What you got? Victoria says, loves your Saturday Maxwell dives. Yeah, I'm loving doing those too, Victoria. We're going to keep going deep in those bad boys, no doubt.
Thank you, Rob. I appreciate you popping in again like usual, bro. Always a pleasure, my man. Lucian wants to hear about the penguins. You know, the penguins, from what I heard, the penguins, they don't believe Prince Andrew. They don't believe him. Not down in Antarctica. And the polar bears up north, they're not believing the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family either. Um, you know, Elizabeth, I really don't know too much about that. I haven't really talked to Maria about that stuff. And, um, I'm sure it just has to do with, uh, with the case. I ha I'm sure it has to do with just the, um, the, the case proceeding and moving forward. As far as anyone being paid off, I have no idea. I have no clue. I'm not too sure. Um... Again, I haven't really talked to Maria too much about that stuff lately. Um, she is, uh, you know, Maria's going through it. She's, she's having a tough time. So I just try and be there to talk to Maria when, you know, to support her in, in her daily, their daily pursuits of her art and all of that stuff. And if, um, if, if she wants to talk more about this stuff, then I'm sure that she will, but... Well, I think it's um, a little bit deeper than that. I think it's uh, more of not so much can't, but why should she? Why should she expose herself to a bunch of morons on Twitter who just want to be vile and mean? So I, I don't blame her for not wanting to be involved. Yeah, Maria's a great person, and as far as the stuff with her case, she uh, when she's ready to come out and she wants to talk about it, she will, but as far as um, that kind of stuff, I never even really delve into it with them. I don't, uh, I don't press people for information. If you notice, like, I don't ever even bring up, like, I don't tag people in my posts or anything like that, ever. Um, I'm just, I'm laser focused on the facts at hand and trying to hammer out all of these twists and turns, you know? Yeah, her paintings are awesome. She really does a great job. No, absolutely, Elizabeth. It's a good question. I just, I honestly, I don't know. I haven't talked to her about that. Um, again, I, I'm sure that when Maria is ready to come out and speak about things again, she will. But as of now, I think she's doing the right thing, like avoiding Twitter and all of that stuff. Who needs it? I mean, it's, it's hard enough to live your life. I mean, imagine battling cancer and having to deal with all these idiots on Twitter and people being stupid and it's just not worth it. Have to watch what you say because you don't know who's following your account. It's just, it's wild. So if I, if I was her, I wouldn't be messing around on the internet either, to be honest with you at this point. That's something I got to work on, Rob. I got to remember to go down over. There's a place right across the street from me. So I got to pop in over there maybe tomorrow and uh, see about a P.O. box for sure. Yeah, you know, when you're battling cancer, it's, it's important to stay positive. No problem, Elizabeth. Absolutely. You know, Sanderson, I think that there's a, there's enough people that delve into other aspects of the case that get away from the facts, right? So I try to stay here on this podcast. We stay focused on not what we know, what we can prove. So I think that there's a need for that in this case, right? A little bit of sanity, so that's why I just, I stick to the facts as, as best as we know them. And I try not to muddy the waters at all. That's why we follow it by the media, right? The articles that come out in the media, we follow those articles and we just break them down as we go. And I think that keeps us on the proper path. 
to not delve too deep into the other stuff. So I just want to make sure that I do the best that I can here and that when I am disseminating uh, information to you folks that it's the truth as I know it. Because the last thing I'll ever do is be dishonest with you folks and tell you something that I, is bullshit that I don't even believe or anything like that. Because it is important that we keep all of the facts correct in this case. Because there's so much. If we start letting things get out of order and it's just too much, it'll be impossible to follow it. So that's what we're going to keep doing here. Just hanging and banging. You know, Ronan Farrow's another one of these dudes. He's from elite society, right? I mean, he did a good job with his reporting, and I don't have any problems with him personally, but I really think that a lot of these so-called hard-charging journalists have really shit the bed in this case and have abandoned their responsibilities when you have a knucklehead like me that has to come in and fill the void, you know that there's a big problem. I shouldn't be on here talking to you folks about anything besides what goes on in the Middle East or sports. I mean, let's get real. But here we are, right? Circumstances make for strange bedfellows, don't they, folks? And the legacy media, they have all the resources in the world, and they just they refuse to go after it. And that goes for Ronan Farrow as well. So... Again, I, you know, I don't really follow his work one way or the other, but I wish he'd have a little bit more courage in this case. Yeah, you know, Sanderson, it's crazy. You got people like us who have regular lives that we have to lead, uh, you know, work, jobs, support our families, but we make the time, we, we, you know, we carve out the time, me to come here and speak with you, you to sit here and speak with me about this case. And we don't have nowhere near the resources that these legacy media outlets have, but they don't even take the time to do it. So that's cool, though. We, we all know where it stands. We all know the score. And if they don't want to do it, then it's up to us as citizens who give a damn to fill the void. And thankfully, we have that technology now where we can reach out, we can coordinate, we can congregate, and we can pretty much, you know, formulate our own version of the media. It's pretty amazing, isn't it, Elizabeth? You got people, hardworking American citizens who can't get the vaccine. Your mom, for instance, who's in her 70s, but you got Ghislaine Maxwell getting it. Now, don't get me wrong, I want her to be as safeguarded as possible because she has to stand trial, and it's one less excuse. But we need to get on the ball and make sure that this shit is moving at warp speed. Rob says, would love to get in Kellen's face and ask her why she's not in jail yet. Man, me too. If I could have a conversation with Sarah Kellen Vickers, boy, there's a lot of questions I would ask her. A lot of these people, questions that people seem to be scared to ask. Well, me, my beard, and my fat mouth, we don't have any boundaries. We ask all of the questions around here. Jen says, yep, loudly and in public, so everyone hears and watches. It, you know, it just comes down to having the courage, and a lot of these people just don't have the courage to do it. So... It falls to people like us to do it, and guess what? Here we are. I would have never thought that I'd be sitting here all of these days in talking about this case. This is certainly not something I ever wanted to be involved in, to be honest with you. But here we are. And it is something that I take, personally, I take pretty seriously. I think it's a very important case. It's important for... Not only these survivors getting justice, but it's important for us as citizens to see this shit through. <laughs> you know, it, it's crazy, and I just I I really look forward to these Sunday chats. I have a lot of fun with with these chats, talking to all of you, and you know going back and forth and hearing all of your ideas and 
you know, because when I'm when I'm speaking on the podcast every day, there's no going back and forth, really. I mean, there's emails and Twitter exchanges and stuff like that. But in real time, it just adds another dimension to the conversation. And I love it. But you are right. I'm going to have to wrap it up now. Head on up and finally get some sleep. It has been a long ass day for your boy. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate everybody supporting the podcast. I appreciate everybody coming in on these Sundays. I know we spend a lot of time together here on Sundays, so I do appreciate that. Um, I look forward to next Sunday as well, folks, and the rest of this week, obviously. Every day, at least one episode, probably two every day. But, folks, I hope you all had a fantastic weekend, and I will see you all back here next Sunday, 7 p.m. Until then, make sure that you are sharing the podcast, you're subscribed, and all of that good jazz. Later, everybody. Have a great night.